Hi everyone, my name is Jason and I'm an alcoholic. We wanted to bring you a follow-up to the uh, message that we had last week from Paul. Uh, there's been a couple questions in regards to uh, uh, the developments with COVID-19. So with that, I give you Paul Malloy. Thank you, Jason. I think that uh, we are now another week into the shelter in place program for most folks who are living in Oxford houses. There are 2,865 Oxford houses around the country in 49 of the 50 states. In each of those houses, all the folks living in the house are in recovery from alcoholism and drug addiction. And we function like an ordinary family, except unlike an ordinary family, we don't indulge in drinking alcohol or using addictive drugs. Instead, we focus on how can we change our individual behavior so that we become comfortable living the rest of our life without being high, being sober, in recovery. In doing this, we are like any other family in America except that we go out of our way to help each other to develop this new behavior. We help each other to remember how bad things were when we were addicted, when we were using alcohol recklessly, when we were getting drunk, causing problems, when we were getting high on drugs, when we were using risky behavior, maybe because of the thrill of it, but sometimes ending up in very serious conditions whether an automobile accident, whether a robbery, whether assaults, whatever, we often ended up in jail. Two thirds of us have done jail time. But now we're living a life that where we want to change and where we want to set an example for all of society. Every house is democratically self-run. You have term limits on officers. Everyone pays an equal share of expenses so that we keep our family together and we keep it going. Now the question is, how do we behave in this time of crisis where the whole society is faced with the Covira virus, 19, COVID-19, which is scary. It's invisible. We can't see it. And it's scary. Well, the first thing we do is we follow the directions of local officials by sheltering in place, staying in the house as long and as much as we can, not going out, gathering in crowds, not going out unnecessarily to the store. If one of us in the house is going to the store, we ask the other folks, is there anything I can pick up for you so we can minimize the trips to the store? At the same time, we continue our focus on changing our behavior so that we have a comfortable life without using alcohol or without using drugs. Now, some of us have been laid off from our jobs. Some of us will continue to have to go out to work because we have essential jobs, perhaps working in a store in order to provide food so other people can get food to eat. For those who are going out, I hope that when they come back, they're particularly careful. Wash their hands. Sometimes even take your clothes off outside the house before you come in, depending on what your job is. But you don't want to share virus with other people. And we all want to be careful when one of us gets the virus to be tested. And if we're positive, to stay isolated in the house. As I mentioned in our last conversation, Oxford House set a wonderful example during the early days of the HIV AIDS crisis. We lived with folks who had the virus, who were in trouble, we treated them well, and we behaved like decent human beings. We have that opportunity again. With 23,000 people living in Oxford houses, obviously there's some folks who are going to contract the virus. 
it's up to the rest of us to treat them well, to treat them like family because they are. Now, a few years ago at one of our conventions, Jackson had put together this wonderful blueprint. And the title of the convention or the theme of the convention was Oxford House Blueprint for Success. And I urge folks to go back and look at that blueprint because there are all kinds of nice characteristics in that blueprint about how people should behave and how we, each of us, can feel better about ourselves and be good, responsible citizens. We can be honest, we can show gratitude. Jackson did a wonderful job in that blueprint. This is a time for us to go back and look at it. You can see it on our website by going to About Us, and then you scroll down to the conventions. And this particular convention, I think, was in Dallas, 2016. Click on that, and that whole program comes up about Blueprint for Success. I mentioned the Blueprint for Success because some of us now will be laid off. Some of us will lose our jobs, at least temporarily, because our business is closed. Many of us in that situation will be getting a grant payment from the government, either cash or unemployment benefits, and we should help each other figure out how to sign up for that, how to get it. Oxford House, Inc., our central office is spread all over now, but uh, we're working from home, telecommuting, I guess one calls it. But we will help you figure out so that everybody in every house gets whatever they're entitled to. But that does mean that most of us will have some money coming in. So it's important to pay the equal share of expenses. And if there's a gap for somebody because they're laid off, they haven't gotten paid, they don't have money, the rest of us in a house should extend credit to them for a while. But none of us should say, let's none of us pay and stiff the landlord. Why? Well, first of all, it's not right. It's dishonest. It's going back to that old behavior where we said, boy, have I found a new hustle. <laughs> don't do it. Instead, follow the blueprint for success. Stay on track. Stay on track for getting your own life in shape and being a good example to everybody else. Now, sometimes, if everybody in the house is laid off, if it takes time for this federal money, whether it's unemployment insurance or federal grant, getting to the individuals, I'm sure landlords will give us an extra week or two weeks to pay the rent. But please, Please don't let that bad thought scoot in our mind. Like when we used to think in the jail cell, what's the next ripoff I'm going to pull off? Don't do it. Instead, stay on track. Remember the blueprint for success. And remember to go out of the house as few times as possible to get everybody's space within the house. And for God's sakes, wash your hands. Hang in there, folks. We'll make it through day at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And again, I'm sure I, I join with everyone else that we wish you and Jane to stay safe during this time. Thank you again. Thank you.